Hi, everybody. Today is Wednesday, March 29th, 2023. My name is Michael Zornick, and today I'm going to do a little bit of a video demo and code walk, uh, walking you through a feature I just added to my side project blog uh, engine that enables you to do image uploads uh, in the article editor. So here I have my article editor, and it's pretty basic right now. It's got a title and a slug, and I published that in a body. And then from within this body, you can type in, you know, arbitrary markdown and have it rendered appropriately in the article. Um, but I needed the ability to upload images and, and movies and other things of that nature. And I was interested in emulating um, how GitHub works in that, like, when you're editing, let's say, an issue in GitHub, you can kind of type markdown. And you can kind of drag and drop an image on top and it'll upload it to a space in a, in a bucket, and then it'll kind of replace um, the upload uh, comment with a URL to where it is. And so I'm working on this, and it's working. And so I figured I'd give a little bit of a demo, um, and then I kind of walk through some of the implementation details that I had to work through um, getting this to work with LiveView, which is a little different because it's a you know LiveView being a backend system. And it's being kind of more of a front end concern. There was a little bit of a back and forth there to kind of make it work right. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's say I have a line uh, like one one, then I have a new line, and three thirty three, and then I want to insert an image in between one one and three thirty three. I can insert my cursor, you know, right in the middle, and then as I drag uh, an image or a movie on top, it will upload, and it'll replace that uh, upload comment with a with the URL, um, well, that was really fast. So let me, uh, I wanna bring up the network debugging features. I'm gonna throttle this a little bit. So that way um, we can see it. Uh, you can see some of the upload progress uh, <laughs> indicators. Um, so, okay, so let's try that again. So uh, I'll just take that movie and drag it on top. And you can see uh, it'll, it'll immediately insert a comment that says uploading, and then it'll put the file name. And then down here in the bar, you'll see files uploading, dot, 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 and it'll show like 91%, you know, 99%, whatever. And then when it's done, it puts in the URL, and it works. Um, and you can do that for you know a single file. You can do that for multiple files, and it will show you like an upload percent that is like the overall percent. Um, uh, of the collection of files that you're currently uploading. And you'll see, like, as the first one is finished, we'll replace that comment. And then as the second one finishes, uh, it'll replace that comment as well. For um, most files, we just insert the URL to the bucket. But for images currently, uh, we insert the markdown uh, syntax. So you can see this is a JPEG, and so it, it puts in a little markdown syntax, um, and I might change that in the future, but that's kind of like emulating what GitHub does right now. Um, in addition to drag and drop, of course, you can, you know, select from the file system and, you know, that'll work too. And yeah, and so this, you know, this works pretty well. I mean, it's uh, it's been challenging to implement because it involves a lot of moving parts. Um, and so in a separate branch, um, so this is all part of my uh, Franklin blog project. Um, which is open source and you guys can check it out if you want. Um, this isn't really like a, Franklin is, is an implementation of my personal website. It's not meant to be like a public application, but um, you can see here, I had a ticket here, research and document file image upload tools. And I did a PR as part of this, and this was more of like a foundational PR. So this introduced the ability to run a local S3 compatible storage system. So for me, I'm using um, MinIO, uh, which runs, like for me, runs in a Docker container. And uh, you can see I've got a bucket here called Franklin Media, and it's currently using, you know, over a little over 200 megabytes. It's got 191 objects. Um, so this lets me kind of run local S3 kind of as a, kind of along the lines of like, I have a database dependency, and so I'm running local Postgres. Um, and so you having this here enables me to, you know, when I'm working locally, better emulate what it's going to look like in the real world. Um, and so we've got an S3 system, we've got the foundational stuff to generate like pre-signed URLs. 
um, which is all part of the uploading system. So I'll start there and say that, um, so this is a live view application and it's using the live view uploads tools where basically you can configure a live view to allow uploads and set it up and then does all the basic stuff. And then it also does um, the direct to S3 kind of flavoring of this, which is instead of having a file be selected from like on a browser and then sent to my, you know, Phoenix application. Um, instead, what I'm going to have have done is JavaScript on the client side, send it directly to S3. Um, and so the way this works is you basically configure a uh, pre-sign URL. It's basically a two-arity function that you configure here to external. And the goal here is that this, this function needs to return back um, data basically. <laughs> um, uh, so you're, you, you know, you metadata, you give it an okay meta and socket. And then within that meta, you declare what uploader you're using, which is S3 in this case. And that's mostly for file naming matchup. Um, and then any kind of information that is, that the JavaScript needs to know about. So that pretty much starts with like the URL of the pre-signed file. Um, so I'm doing that. Um, this example that is included in the documentation, uh, this kind of references a Christmas cord, simple S3 upload file, which I'm not using because I'm using, uh, X AWS, uh, dependency itself. And I'm generating the pre-signed URLs with that. And the other thing I'm kind of avoiding right now is that the way Chris has got, the way Chris has designed this example, um, is that he includes all of the upload restrictions in the pre-signed URL, such as like the content type and the max file size. And he sends, sends it as a post, um, in the JavaScript. Uh, yeah. So like, uh, that's not it. Okay. So if you look at this JavaScript that they show as an example, um, they send this as a, uh, post and they do it as a multi, um, multi-form part, uh, body. And they do, you know, they include all of the contents of the pre-send URL in that way. I, I kind of simplified this a little bit in that I do, I put, and my pre-send URLs are much more open-ended. And I, I find that that's acceptable for my use case because this is like an internal tool and I, it's not going to be open to the public. So it's not really a problem. Um, in the future I could see, uh, changing that a little bit, but, um, so I'm doing uploads, I'm doing S direct to S3 and then my next real challenge is kind of handling the back and forth between the front end and live view. And to explain it's that like, as an upload is happening and progress is happening or new files come in, if I have focus in on the body, live view will never up the, update the form contents uh, underneath me. Because it always assumes that the user, if the user has focus on it, like the user's typing, they don't want to ever like destroy data or lose stuff that's being typed. And so I kind of have this like back and forth with um, the live view and the front end to update the body uh, when it's in focus. And that's kind of awkward, but it, you know, it's, I don't know. I don't really know of a better way around it. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll start this off with, uh, one, like the first level of like hackiness to my implementation is that, um, currently, like, if you look at the, this is my implementation of the, uh, the uploader code. Um, and you'll see like it gets access to the entry, which is just a value struct that de describes the upload entry. Um, and then an on viewer error callback. You don't actually have access to the live view here. So there's no way to push an event to the live view to say, Hey, this upload has started. Um, and so my first like hack <laughs> is that, um, when I generate the pre-signed URL, I immediately push an event to the front end that says, Hey, you know, text area inject request. And this is a custom uh, JavaScript hook that I made for the text area. 
says, hey, you know, insert uh, wherever the cursor position is this new content. And so this will insert the comment um, that basically says, you know, uploading file name, and that'll put the content in the, the body. Now, um, it does that, and that's fine. Um, because yeah, so it does that. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to really keep it straight in my head for all like the back and forth that's going on. But when a preset URL is generated for a download, it immediately puts that upload in there. And then when the upload is working, um, or like when progress comes in, um, so it has the handle progress stuff. Uh, and for that, I'm just, I have this like little simple map that's tracking the progress of the upload progress of each ent entry UAD. And then like a progress based on an integer that says like, Hey, this is like 40% uploaded or 42% uploaded. And then, um, when it's a hundred percent, which will happen when handle progress calls back with done being true. Uh, it'll replace the upload progress description in the body with the new uh, URL. And this is the second part of this hacky response. Um, and this happens, it happen, I do it both on the back end and the front end. So I grab the body and I find the upload progress description that it would be appropriate for this file name. And then I basically update the body replacing the, you know, the progress description with whatever, you know, car, you know, the URL was generated. Um, I do that. And then I also push an event telling the front end to replace that in the text area. And I have to do that because there's kind of like, there's two ways uploads can happen. Um, you know, you can, you can not have the body in focus where you select an item and you hit open and the, the back end almost has complete control where it can kind of update body and do whatever you want. Um, but there's the other problem of like when, when I'm in focus and it's uploading, I, I can't have, um, that, the images happen really, really fast. Uh, <laughs> I can't have the, the back end because if I, tr if I only update it on the back end, then it would never be updated here. So I kind of have to update it at both spots, which feels really lousy. Um, but I don't know a better way to handle this outside of like doing it completely in the front end and avoiding live view entirely, but it doesn't really seem like a good option for this app. Um, so I'm doing it both and it works, but it does feel a little weird and I'm probably breaking some expectations there, but I'm trying to document it as best I can. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, this is, this is a hard thing to kind of demonstrate like, like code wise, but, um, I'm pretty happy with the initial implementation of this and that it works and, you know, it's relatively, uh, expressive about like an upload is happening, the upload has progress and so forth. I'm sure there's good opportunities for improvement to like the error handling and things of that nature. And then eventually, um, so this is using, um, this design is using the GitHub primer UI, um, which I'm taking advantage of a project called primer, uh, live, which is an implementation of the primer component system in live view. Um, and it works fairly well so far. I, you know, no real major complaints. And so one thing I'm interested in doing is they do not have the component for the markdown editor, which is like, this is the typical like GitHub experience where in like a newer GitHub project, you'd see any kind of markdown area where you could type markdown in, you could preview it, you could highlight stuff, uh, you know, is bold <laughs> and with this little toolbar to a couple other things. And then it also has like the drag and drop behavior. Um, this is obviously a very complex component. Uh, I'd like to take a shot at implementing this for the primer live system, and then I could use that. And so hopefully in time, I'll be able to kind of refactor my own upload system to work alongside this. Um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes, 
but primer's pretty cool. That was added recently to my admin, and I'm really this is the only page that's really kind of styled with that toolkit right now. But that is definitely where I'm headed. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is a bit rambly, um, but I figured I'd want to capture uh, my excitement to get this over the hump. Um, the PR itself is right here, and I will. I will browse through it really fast and see if there's anything else to talk about that is uh, terribly interesting. So um, we have the the text area mutation hook, which I'm adding. Um, uh, let me hide the uh, files, make this a little bit wider. So this is a basic hook. Uh, I basically attach it to a text area, and then the live view can send events to uh, this hook basically saying text area inject request it gives us some content and then the reason this is important to do on the front end is because on the front end i actually know the cursor position inside the text area if i try to do that on the back end the cursor position is not known in theory i could kind of listen for the cursor position and send that back to live view maybe do it all in live view but for now i felt it better to do it in the front end um then text area replace uh that's we talked a little bit about that before. Um, I add the hooks uh, via the app.js file. And then I've got some components like the animated spinner you see for the, the currently uploading. Um, and then I kind of grabbed the admin file input group, which is that kind of gray bar, the entirety of this gray bar in the widget. Um, it's not particularly well isolated. And I even have a note up here that it's really highly coupled to the editor live live view. We might want to fix that later, but that might come as I introduce that new um, component uh, from Primer. But um, that's how that works. And then other than that, this is the editor live, which saw a lot of just clean up uh, into how its form works. Um, and then we've got upload files, which is what Phoenix Live View uses to track file stuff. And then I've got my own upload progress, which is just that simple amount to track um, percentages of files. And uh, yeah, we clear we clear the upload progress when all the pro when all of the all entries have hit 100%. This allows people to upload like multiple segments of files so they can grab like two at a time. And then I know to show the right percentage. Uh, in the UI for what is finished. Um, update body. This is uh, this is the the this is the event that the front end can use to update the body. Uh, this is actually kind of interesting. Um, so when I tell when I send <laughs> when the pre send URL is generated, it sends an event the front end to say, hey, inject this comment into the text area. But then at the end of this, uh, this hook will tell the live view, hey, the body has changed. You should update the body. And so this is how like I'm getting I'm getting away with the like, well, if they're in focus, if their body's like if the text area is in focus while they're editing, this is how I kind of keep the the body in sync from the front end to the back end. Um, so that's there for that. And it is, uh, appropriately commented, um, why I do it and why I feel it's hacky, but, <laughs> uh, and then what else we've got the URL kind of progress attachment, uh, maybe add markdown image syntax, pretty basic right now. The pre-signed URL, um, again, I'm using, so I have a, I have a thing called S3 storage. It's a very simple module that just generates pre-signed URL based on a file name. And that pushes that to the front end. And da, da, da. yeah, I already talked about that. Um, oh, then I just did some random updates to make this live navigation work better and made this an underscore instead of a hyphen to better match other form elements which had underscore and ended up with a bunch of IDs that had some had some parts of it were underscored, some parts of it were hyphened, and I'm just, just looking for consistency there. But yeah, um, it, 
you know, for for all the complexity that this PR delivers, it's actually a pretty small PR. But um, yeah, I ended up uh, creating a lot of new uh, tickets and issues in my project to improve this over time. Um, trying to keep this as lean as possible. And so I will continue working on those enhancements later. But for now, I'm feeling good that this is working and I'm going to squash and merge on camera. And there we go. So that's uploads and that's merged in domain. Um, if you've gotten this far, I uh, hope you got some value out of the video. Uh, if you have any comments, or feedback, let me know. And I will talk to you next time.